so today I will uh, present you uh, our work uh, about leveraging consumer flexibility uh, for the provision of ancillary services. And this has been uh, a, a work made during my PhD and uh, in collaboration with uh, the University of Adelaide and Energinet and has been founded by CITES. And, uh, sorry. and uh, specifically, I will uh, introduce uh, the motivations uh, of this work and uh, explain uh, what has been uh, uh, the solution that uh, we developed to unlock uh, consumers' flexibility potential, named ancillary services for the zero, explain uh, how we modeled uh, the entire approach, and show a few of these results uh, and conclude uh, with the most important findings. And um, so when we talk uh, about power system operation, we know that in the past, this was characterized by conventional generator units uh, and uh, consumers were uh, reactive and passive. And the operation was uh, overall almost predictable and uh, controllable. However, um, today, uh, with the uh, introduction of uh, renewable and consumers uh, becoming uh, more uh, and more active and dynamic, things have been changing. The generation is much more intermittent. And this means that the operation overall is uh, more stochastic and is less controllable. And uh, what does this mean uh, to us? So of course there are important environmental benefits to it, but there are also some challenges that need to be addressed. And uh, specifically with the introduction of uh, uh, more stochasticity, we have uh, an increasing complexity also due to the nonlinearity and dynamics uh, of renewable and consumers becoming more dynamic. And, uh, and this of course means that uh, we uh, need much more stability in our power system. And this uh, implies that uh, we have higher demand for ancillary services. However, uh, it is important also to, to remember that uh, there might be a case where uh, ancillary services provision uh, might be challenged or uncertain. In fact, uh, conventional generator units uh, that are uh, the units that today are mainly providing uh, these services uh, might uh, operate underrated uh, with underrated capacity uh, due to the competition of other generator units. And also uh, these conventional generator units uh, might, uh, might retire. Also, if we consider what are the uh, the global uh, uh, climate targets of becoming CO2 neutral and to um, basically fully rely on, uh, on renewable, then uh, of course this implies that conventional generation units uh, will not be able to provide uh, these services. Uh, so we have to understand uh, how, how to do things differently. And um, so today I will discuss about uh, how to exploit uh, demand response. Uh, so consumers uh, uh, that alter their consumption according to the necessity of the grid and how this can be beneficial for us uh, to also provide services as ancillary services to the grid. And in particular, we said that this is a consumption that can change over time when there is uh, an incentive to it. And uh, specifically, there are two possibilities to have uh, demand response programs and um, which are called explicit and implicit. So in the first, in the explicit one, uh, this is the, the first type uh, that, uh, that has been developed for demand response program. And you can see that the control logic uh, uh, is uh, at the de demand response operator level. So there is an external entity that decides uh, what consumers uh, will do. And so a control signal is submitted to consumers. Consumers have to respond in a certain way and a certain feedback is sent back. So this is two level communication. And of course this minimizes the uncertainty, but uh, might affect uh, the privacy and autonomy of consumers. And today there is another type of program that has been uh, uh, developed that is called implicit programs. And here you can see that uh, the, the blue dot, the control logic, uh, uh, is uh, at the consumer's level. And uh, in this case, we only have uh, one-way communication where consumer receive a certain 
signal that could be a price from the operator. They decide what to do through some uh, controllers, individual controllers, and then consu uh, consumers uh, have the reaction that can be seen by the operator in an aggregated level. So from a, a consumer's perspective, of course, the autonomy is respected. To, to, to achieve the, the needed uh, change in consumption that is needed from them. So once this is uh, clear, uh, we can ask ourselves uh, how, what is the optimal framework uh, that we can use uh, in order to exploit consumers' flexibility uh, to provide ancillary services uh, and uh, at different volta le uh, voltage levels. So this is uh, uh, the, the idea that we have developed uh, that is called Ancillary Services 4.0 and it basically relies uh, on a uh, on few assumptions. So first uh, we consider uh, both uh, transmission and distribution system operators, uh, and uh, they communicate uh, with the consumers uh, simultaneously. So we have electricity consumers that you can see here, they are uh, equipped with some uh, uh, smart meter and home energy management system in order to be able uh, to respond uh, to a certain signal and uh, schedule their consumption in a different way. And the three main uh, concepts uh, are the base of this idea. So we have time varying prices, which means that uh, the uh, system operators uh, uh, formulate, generate uh, some prices according to uh, what is the status of, uh, of the system, and this is uh, submitted to the consumers. Consumers uh, have adopted these controllers to be able to react individually to, uh, to the prices, and there is a one-way communication. So it means that consumers have the reaction and the operators can see the overall reaction only at aggregated level. And if we look at the requirements that we would uh, like to have uh, when thinking of future energy system, we can see that with the time varying prices, uh, we can handle the dynamics, nonlinearity, stochasticity that we have uh, uh, in the power system. And this can be done both at transmission and distribution system. And the adoption of controller allows us uh, uh, to have a fast reaction from consumers. Uh, and the one-way communication makes it uh, uh, faster, scalable, and uh, does not uh, affect the consumer's uh, privacy and it's cost effective because we need uh, a much cheaper infrastructure. So let's understand how this has been modeled. And uh, specifically three types of models have been needed to formulate uh, ancillary services for dot zero. And here you can see we have uh, three main levels. We have the transmission, distribution, and consumer's uh, response. And a certain external uh, disturbance is submitting to the system. And the first model that we need uh, is about uh, the power system control model. So to understand how uh, transmission and distribution uh, need to react uh, when there is a certain disturbance. So whenever we have uh, this uh, voltage or frequency deviation, uh, this first model understands, uh, uh, quantifies what is the needed flexibility from the two different systems to fix the problem. Then we have a second type of model that is consumer's price response model. So understanding what is uh, the responsiveness of consumers uh, toward prices. So we have uh, different prices as an input and, and uh, as a, we, we have to understand what is the relationship between prices and consumers. So understanding if we want to achieve a certain change in consumption, what is uh, the uh, proper price uh, uh, that needs to be sent to them. And finally, uh, the, the effective flexibility response model. So this uh, uh, in, in the future should not be modeled because this should be the actual uh, response uh, of consumers. So what is the actual consumer's behavior and uh, what is the, uh, the flexibility that can be achieved? But of course, at this level is uh, still to be modeled uh, because uh, uh, the system needs to be implemented to, to collect the real data from consumers. So now we focus uh, on the first type of model that is the power system control model, both at transmission and distribution level. And uh, when we talk about power system, uh, we have to focus on two main level. So the uh, transmission and distribution. And uh, at the transmission level, we have uh, uh, developed uh, what is the 
the reaction and what is uh, the, 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 the control model uh, by using a, a load frequency controller, a two area, and we use the two area because uh, we simulated the Danish case, so uh, having DK1 and DK2. And uh, we wanted to compare uh, how our system was uh, performing compared to the traditional one with the conventional generators. And uh, uh, here you can see uh, the red line. This is uh, the conventional uh, approach where we use uh, uh, conventional generator units uh, to provide uh, uh, primary regulation, while uh, we have uh, uh, the, the, the the, the blue lines, this is our contribution. So we have basically replaced the conventional generator units with the F that is the flexible consumers. And at the distribution level, we have approached a power flow to understand how the, the, the signal, the, the disturbance was affecting the voltage level. And um, regarding the aggregated consumer stress response model, we have uh, developed uh, first uh, um, the consumer price uh, response model that was basically uh, understanding what is uh, um, the, the reaction of consumers towards prices. And this, of course, uh, uh, required uh, to understand uh, an understanding of uh, uh, how consumers uh, react, uh, what is the price response for them, what are the constraints, what are the interests of consumers. While uh, at the lowest level, like the, the third type of model, we wanted to model what is the realized uh, consumer's response. So in order to do that, of course, uh, uh, we, we depend on data. And the data can be used to model consumers' reaction toward prices. And specifically, when we talk about data, this implies uh, electricity consumption, uh, time, type of consumers, uh, and this can be industrial, commercial, or residential temperature, because uh, this affects also the type of loads that are used, and uh, uh, the, the electricity prices that change over time. And uh, due to the data scarcity, of course, uh, uh, we had uh, to approach a model uh, to, to, to simulate what is the reaction of consumers. And different models uh, have been developed, uh, considering different size and consumers composition, both at the transmission and distribution level. And uh, if we look at, at what has been developed on the transmission side, we can say first that the frequency is not a local issue. And um, so it is possible to approach uh, the model considering an aggregate group of consumers uh, to investigate their flexibility. So what has been done here, first, uh, we developed a model to uh, simulate or to schedule what was the cost minimization for consumers. So we have model the behavior of an aggregate group of uh, home energy management systems. Then uh, we have uh, um, aggregated uh, the flexibility um, by doing a Monte Carlo simulation. And finally, in order to understand uh, what were uh, the, the, the prices to this, uh, we have approached uh, a neural network uh, that was able to basically understand the relationship between the prices and the, and the consumption of consumers in a way that it was possible to generate having as an input the consumption that needs to be changed at aggregated level, what was the prices that was needed to be submitted to consumers. And specifically, this has been a study made in collaboration with Energinet and uh, where we approached, uh, we used uh, their modeling and uh, planning tool CIF in order to have uh, enough data uh, to, to train the neural network and, um, and investigate uh, what were the prices uh, to submit to consumers in order to achieve a certain change in consumption. And this has been uh, 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 explained in, in a paper that we published. And um, regarding the distribution level, uh, it's a different story because the voltage is a local issue. And um, so it, has, it needs to be approached considering each uh, DSO bus. However, for computational reason, uh, we did not do that. We have clustered buses that were uh, close enough uh, in order to make it uh, uh, easier to compute uh, when scale it. And um, so how we developed it has been first to develop a model that was uh, describing consumers' willingness uh, 
to uh, provide flexibility, and this, of course, was a, a function mainly on price. And, uh, and then we developed the API controller uh, that was able to, to link uh, voltage and price. So by knowing what was the voltage that was needed to be fixed, then a certain price was, uh, uh, was generated. And if we look at some simulation results that we had, well, first here, I, I show you what happened to the frequency. So if we look at the plot, you can see that we have a, a blue line that represents our performance and the, the, the red one is the performance of the conventional system. So before applying AS 4.0. And here we have the, the frequency trend. And every 30 seconds, we uh, inject uh, some disturbance uh, to the system. So you can see that the frequency goes uh, up and down depending on what type of uh, disturbance we are injecting. And as you can see, um, with, uh, with the application of, of uh, AS 4.0, we are able to reduce uh, the frequency deviation by around 50% compared to conventional method. And uh, this uh, is a... Uh, uh, also standing for the voltage. So here you can see we have, uh, uh, we have shown uh, a case of 33 buses and it is the same uh, simulation time. So you can see that every 30 seconds we inject a, a certain disturbance. And uh, um, the, 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 the results show that the, the, uh, the model is able to uh, mitigate uh, the voltage issues uh, at the DSO buses. So within the 30, seconds uh, that is the time where we are injecting a new uh, a new disturbance uh, we are able to fix uh, also the voltage and um, in the in the plot below where we are showing uh, the the different operational issues at the transmission system operator and the distribution system operator you can see the two results combined so we have the blue line that shows uh, what's happening to the frequency when we apply um, uh, the AS 4.0 and uh, the orange lines it's showing uh, what is uh, uh, the number uh, of, of buses with issues uh, in two different cluster of buses and you can see that uh, within the 30 seconds uh, we are always able to fix uh, all the issues uh, at the buses so overall the number of buses uh, decrease over time and always reaches zero and uh, so in order to conclude uh, we can say that uh, electricity consumers uh, have uh, high potential to provide flexibility to the grid and uh, AS 4.0 is uh, a new approach uh, for ancillary services provision which is based uh, on three main concepts which are time varying electricity prices, uh, approaching one-way communication between operator and consumers uh, and these consumers uh, need to be equipped with some control techniques and uh, control techniques are, are also used uh, to uh, generate uh, uh, time varying prices. And uh, this uh, uh, can be used to handle operational issues uh, at the transmission and distribution level. And uh, ancillary services for that zero, um, according to our results, uh, achieved uh, better performances uh, than the conventional generation units method. And this is uh, all for me. And uh, thank you for the attention. And if you have questions, I am here. Thank you, Julia. We actually have two questions from our fantastic audience, and I'm not sure that I can make Pastor Javadi uh, speak up the question, so I will just shortly resume it for you. Yes. How the consumer's consumption behavior, is it measured and inserted to the model that you presented? And second part of the question is, is there any real study case that you could validate the results of the simulations with? The question is also in the chat. Okay, well, um, thank you for the question. So the first uh, uh, is about the consumers, uh, how, how we actually included the, the consumer's behavior. And we approach this uh, differently for transmission and distribution. We made uh, a big study uh, for the transmission because we had more data. Uh, and these data were coming from uh, Elfo Brooks panel uh, from Dansk Energy and uh, in Energinet, and they ha they provided uh, a lot of data regarding uh, consumers' uh, consumption, and uh, we used uh, this data in a model that we developed uh, a mixed integer linear program uh, that was able to uh, study 
uh, cost minimization for consumers. Uh, so we have assumed that consumers were receiving some time varying prices, have modeled this mixed integer linear program that was minimizing the cost, and uh, uh, we have uh, uh, modeled uh, several constraints uh, uh, depending on the type of category uh, of consumers that we were uh, considering. We uh, consider 29 different uh, type of uh, consumers uh, that were uh, industrial, uh, commercial and residential. And uh, so the, the, the constraints uh, were basically uh, different depending on, on, the, on, the, on the category of consumers. And uh, we have uh, run this uh, um, uh, mixed integer linear program many times in order to collect uh, uh, enough data about what was the reaction of consumers having a certain price as an input. So this was done uh, for uh, the transmission level side. And what we've been done at the distribution side has been uh, much less sophisticated because we didn't have enough data, but also because uh, the, the, the composition of buses uh, regarding consumers can change in every bus. So making the same approach to the distribution level uh, was uh, too complicated. So what has been done, uh, we found a, um, a function in, uh, in literature that describes uh, the relationship between prices and, uh, and consumption. So we applied that. Thank you. Thank you, Julia. We have another question from um, Moshin Benay. And I'll try to see whether I can actually unmute him so he can raise his question right away. Um, Moshin Benay, can you uh, access this, the um, chat? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Yeah. Hi, this is Mohsen. Uh, nice to meet you all. Um, I just, uh, I'm just trying to look at the problem from the viewpoint of end user consumers, you know? Yes. Uh, so you can see we have uh, consumers. Uh, that uh, are supposed to be uh, controlled by the by price signals many times during the day. So um, we, they are going to lose uh, so much comfort. And on, and, and, on, and on the other hand, um, they are going to charge with high prices in some cases for providing flexibility. Because we are going to incentivize the end user consumers to provide flexibility by by affecting the electricity price they are going to consume. So at the same time, it, se it seems we are, we are both increasing the operation cost and also reducing their comfort. Mm -hmm. uh, so how do you see this problem from the view viewpoint of end user consumers? Yeah, this is a, this is a good question. And uh, I didn't explain uh, much in detail how we developed the model because of the lack of time. But basically, um, consumers are keep the with a home energy management system uh, that uh, make things uh, automated for consumers. So the consumer is not going, uh, first of all, to control every time what is happening because uh, uh, things can be set in the controller in terms of constraints. So consumers can decide whether not to provide flexibility or they can set uh, what is the level of comfort that they, can, uh, that they are happy with. So this is, uh, this is exactly the reason uh, why we did it. We wanted to preserve uh, consumers' comfort uh, and make them able to decide uh, what was going to do with their, uh, with their consumption. And uh, regarding the prices, uh, it is a good question. And uh, we made it in a way that there is uh, a, a limited risk for consumers uh, when approaching uh, time-varying prices. Prices cannot uh, uh, go infinite or like uh, we, we have capped uh, the, the, the time varying prices that we send to consumers and also set it in a way that within the 24 hours, this uh, delta price, uh, this, uh, uh, this time varying prices that was uh, added to a certain uh, flat component of price was nullified fine within the 24 hours. So basically if you are having uh, a constant load within the 24 hours uh, and, uh, and you are not going uh, to, to modify your consumption anyway, uh, you wouldn't have uh, uh, neither a saving or, or an increasing cost uh, compared to the case that you have uh, a flat price. So this is going to be a method that uh, 
can, uh, uh, that allows consumers to save money in the case that uh, they become flexible and, um, and also makes it, uh, 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 solves the risk of consumers uh, in being in different geographical locations where maybe the delta prices uh, uh, would push them for never consuming because the price uh, always increases. So we have made uh, some sort of uh, uh, manipulation, if we can say that, uh, to, this, uh, to this signal in a way that consumers uh, have to handle a lower risk. Uh, 